Welcome to another episode of Frankie D Crafter, the channel where we craft our own world. Today, we'll be finishing up with the Snake Mountain by painting it. And before we jump into it, like, share, and favorite, because it goes a long way for the growth of the channel. And like always, subscribe if you find the content useful, or if you can't wait for another episode. All right, let's start this. I got my mountain all primered up and dry brushed with white to make the colors pop. Choosing the color scheme was super simple. All I had to do was open up my monster manual and look at the Aztec God himself. I really enjoyed the illustration here, especially the top half with the lighter blues and the turquoise. I also really enjoy the transition between the colors on the wings. But my guy doesn't have wings, so I guess I'll use the style on the spikes. Working with oranges and blue will give me a beautiful contrast, since they are complementary colors. Not only are they complementary colors, but they are also very polarizing when it comes to temperature. All of this is a good recipe for an engaging color scheme. The tricky part is when you have to go from one complementary color to another on the same surface. Complementary colors don't mix well and tend to fight each other, making a brown when you mix them. We want a middle ground color if you want the transition of the orange and the blue. I go with the off-white here. I want to start with my richest orange. Without cleaning my brush, I go back and add just a little bit of that off-white to start the transition. The point is to work my way to that off-white and then back to that turquoise. I make sure to use two different brushes here, one for my oranges and the other one for my blues. I wasn't expecting to like this color as much as I did. It's not quite as strong as the orange, which makes the orange pop even more. I feel relaxed by the turquoise color while the orange brings me back to a certain intensity. I'll want to mimic all of these transitions on other pieces of the snake, places like the forehead and the outer teeth. I'd like to take the time to say that I'm a huge fan of these paints. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I am very conscious about my painting skills. I would like to give some credit to the paints here. They aren't my typical apple barrel level paints. I don't think this paint job would have been as successful if I used cheap paints. This brings me to my next point. I think some cheap brands are deceptive. The containers might look bigger, but the paint is not as rich, so it doesn't go as long. Sometimes I end up using more paint because I have to do a few layers with the cheaper paint to get the right coverage. While I painted the turquoise on this piece, I was blown away by how little paint I actually ended up using to get full coverage. Dry brushing white definitely helps. I think I will be slowly switching over to mainly using these paints from now on. I'm using a pretty dark blue, again, adding contrast between the orange and the blue. From here, I'll be doing some of the wet blending on the scales. Another thing I do that I carry from my drawing days is all the self shading details. That statement might make more sense to those who play video games. The best way I can describe this is by treating the shadows like water. Treat it like it spreads. This adds contrast and exaggerates the differences between details. And the best way to get results from this is to use black ink for the shadows and work your way out of them. The issue is that at times this looks cartoonish. I don't have an issue with that at all. But if you like your crafts to be a little bit more realistic, then I would avoid doing this here. I want to continue this battle of opposites on the mountain itself. And although gray tends to be a neutral color, at times it reads off more as cold. At least to me it does. It makes me think of concrete, and concrete's cold. We're no longer talking about color theory here, we're talking about Frankie theory. I had a wash of black knoll oil on the stones and the snake body, regretting the latter. But luckily, the paint is good enough to give good coverage. Easy fix. There is something so satisfying about dry brushing. I'll just tell you I used a light gray from a cheap brand. One of the reasons why I'll keep my cheap paints, I guess.
I made this block from sawdust that I stole from Home Depot. I walked out of it with a bag looking like a raccoon. I start to apply it, thicker on some areas. Sometimes I just leave spots bald. It's up to you really. Play around and test what looks natural for you or what looks good to you. Make sure to get the green on the snake and the pad. It is because of small details like this that pieces look truly finished and unified. The last step with the grass is to dry brush a strong yellow. This is one of those steps that you don't need if you don't like it to look cartoony, but it would kill me to not do this step. It's just so pleasing to my eyes. Like, I just wanna lay there on a sunny day, set up a picnic with my girlfriend and ask her, who do you think will kill us first? The goblins or the rock? That's it for the episode. And if you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel, please consider becoming a patron. It is because of this awesome people that I am able to keep the rod at bay here on Snake Mountain. This week I had them choose between some concepts to modify toys and the results are in. The winner is Kegasaurus. I'm gonna have this guy be written by a dwarf because it just makes sense. And if you can't wait for the next episode, please check out some of my other wacky content. And please stay healthy and be responsible. Peace.